Welcome back. Today we're having a look at what the Ubuntu Unity desktop could have been if it remained the default desktop of the biggest open source operating system on the planet. Yes, Unity 7 was a project that while it took a while to get off the ground, it actually cultivated quite a fan base during its time as the default desktop of Ubuntu from about the 11 series till uh, 2016 or the, the 16.04 series. And I think it got officially retired in 17.10. Uh, but since the 17.10 release, there's not really been any major release of this desktop as it was officially put out to pasture by Canonical. Well, thanks to the work of a fantastic developer known as Rudra, and I'm not gonna try and pronounce the surname, sorry. Uh, Unity is back. 7.6 it's his first official stable update in some time so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around see what's changed and then i'm going to talk about what unity got right back in the day where it could improve moving forward and some challenges that lie ahead for this desktop environment well beloved by those who got on board with linux right as canonical was executing its vision of a convergence of devices around this desktop paradigm. Hop on board, let's see what we can find out today. All right, so first up, the changes. What's actually improved with this desktop now that we've got the first stable release in some time? Well, as the details are unpacked by Rudra uh, on the uh, ubuntuunity.org uh, blog, We've got mostly some glaring bug fixes that have been sitting around for some time and also some aesthetic improvements to help it fit in with the more flat design trends of the last five years or so. So the dash and also the HUD have a redesigned flatter look while maintaining the system transparency and active blur going on behind the windows. The control center has also been updated to include uh, sort of plugs to the various settings from around the GTK side of things. The rounded corners have been improved both on the window borders and on the sides of the dash. There's been some work done to the tool tips of, and the, the like the context menus of these uh, dock items. They managed to migrate the entire code base for the Unity shell over to GitLab so that the development can continue over there. The low graphics mode that uh, runs when you don't have 3D accelerated graphics has also undergone a bit of improvement to make it both faster and less glitchy and obviously just making it available for an up-to-date operating system base in the form of Ubuntu Unity 22.04 and uh, also I've heard it or I've read it rather around the interwebs that uh, they're working on uh, other community members are working on ports of Unity 7.6 to Fedora and also to Arch. So perhaps in the near future, we might be able to see this desktop up and running on more than just Ubuntu. But embracing the retro vibe that Ubuntu brings to me, uh, I've adopted the default wallpaper from the sort of precise pangolin era uh, back in 2012. And uh, let's talk about what Ubuntu Unity got right. So the first thing that stands out to me when we talk about the uh, Ubuntu Unity desktop, and while I will point out along the way that there have been some swap outs made for default app choices. Things like the file manager is now Nemo instead of Nautilus. The default text editor is Pluma and not Gedit. These are changes that I think more accurately uh, lean into Unity's uh, user experience in that these apps still utilize menu bars and so we can still enjoy the global menu at the top of the screen. But ergonomics overall is something that I think the Ubuntu Unity desktop got right. And when it comes to the utilization of a widescreen uh, monitor, the again, Unity was really efficient and maybe ahead of its time for being able to use these things effectively. I think I've just discovered a bug. You minimize, uh, LibreOffice and it disappears from view entirely. There you go, folks, live uh, bug discovery. That one could just be me. But anyway, back to what I was saying, when you have a widescreen uh, monitor, you have a lot more horizontal space than you do vertical. And Ubuntu capitalized on this back in the day by putting the launcher on the left-hand side 
and all of the mouse movements and ergonomics would be directed to the top corner. Why? Well, first of all, the title of the active window would be visible at all times. The menu bars could be visible at all times if that's what you chose. But if you wanted to have a cleaner looking desktop, you could automatically hide them as is the default. This means that over the course of you using the desktop, when you want to get something uh, meaningful done, the window controls, the dash, the HUD menu, and the uh, menu bars are all directed in the same corner. And this leads to quite a muscle memory pathway when it comes to quickly accessing these things. You just throw your mouse up in that corner and you'd be very close to whatever it is that you are wanting to do. It's interesting when you compare this now to what the default work, uh, I guess, workflow of uh, Gnome Shell and uh, Cinnamon to reflect a more traditional desktop paradigm and even Plasma uh, don't have the same amount of uh, mouse efficiency when it comes to their overall desktop workflow. And I think that's something that Ubuntu Unity got right then and it continues to get it right now. I think the other thing that Unity really got right back in the day was it became a very instantly recognizable uh, mainstream operating system in that during this era, Ubuntu Unity uh, and the Unity desktop with the panel or the dock running down the left hand side became almost uh, instantly recognizable. If you saw this on a monitor in the background of a documentary of, uh, I don't know, an animation studio or something or a game developer, you instantly knew that it was Ubuntu running in the background. Why? Because of the colors and because of that dock running down the left hand side. That dock running down the left hand side still lives on today, but it was key to Ubuntu establishing itself as a alternative desktop for the masses. Uh, and they might have lost a little bit of that personality by uh, championing a pre-existing open source project in the form of GNOME. GNOME is definitely better off for having that bump in user base, but man, I really loved what they were going for here. It had its own quirky, unique, but modern take on what a desktop could do. Some, a lot of the ideas that we have in the Ubuntu Dash, being able to right click things, sort things out by category, a lot of these were influenced by and later became influences for uh, changes made in GNOME Shell. And I'll get to where this could go or where I'd love to be able to see it go uh, in just a minute. The other thing that I think Unity got right back in the day, or at least it did towards the, uh, the last two or three years of this product's life cycle was the uh, speed, performance, and fluidity of the desktop and its animations. Like even now, when I click and drag things around and uh, you know snap windows side to side, minimize things to the dock and bring them back, there are still such fluid animations to this and it still feels really snappy. I don't know, they just hit the balance of window animations really well here. It wasn't overly flashy or immature like the Compiz days of yore, even though funnily enough, this is running Compiz in the background, uh, but it gave it such a, again, really strong desktop identity. It felt like Unity when you were using it and no other desktop felt like it. I really dig it. And of course the Piesta resistance, at least for me back in the day, video editing as much as I was, was the HUD menu. And it's never better uh, displayed than when you have a program with the complexity of something like LibreOffice, where if you know you want to deal with, oh gee, I don't know, uh, bullet points, but you can't remember where exactly that particular menu item is meant to be, then you would hit the Alt key, start typing, and it would show up. Now, the issue is that uh, unfortunately, many of these apps no longer support the plugin that, it that the heads up display menu requires. So instead of being able to quickly search in an app like LibreOffice, uh, yeah, you have to go the old fashioned way through the menu bars. Now, back in the day, uh, Canonical used to put a fair bit of effort into patching these through. So things like Firefox and LibreOffice and other apps that use different toolkits other than the default GTK widget sets, there was always a fair bit of work going on in the background to make sure those things mapped through. Unfortunately, that work has long since stopped. And so some of these apps no longer work with the global menu. Also, we'll talk more about issues soon, but the same can be said for apps like the Firefox browser. It kind of breaks the experience. 
but we'll get to that later. A few things here to wrap up in terms of what Unity uh, brought to the table. I think it was a great example of a unified system settings panel. Most of the settings that any regular person would need for the desktop and the hardware was all in this very simplified and searchable system settings panel. It still looks great. It still works really well, and it still holds up as a great glanceable and simple system settings panel. The other thing that I think added uh, a lot of uh, power users back to the Unity fold back in the day was the evolution of the Unity Tweak tool. And this is something that became a mainstay for anybody that used the Unity desktop uh, beyond the default configuration. The customization levels that you could achieve through the Unity Tweak tool to not only uh, change things like the switching tool, which is excellent, by the way, I, I think I've yet to find a better looking and, uh, and more glanceable uh, switcher than the one that shipped with Unity. Uh, and, and you could customize so much about this desktop. I mean, have a look at some of the options here in terms of window snapping, hot corners, what sort of animations you wanted with different window focuses, how many workspaces you wanted, what kind of themes you wanted. By the way, the themes have been updated to reflect the current Yaru uh, theming scheme with their various accent colors, which is nice to see. Uh, curses, fonts, it could all be done through the Unity Tweak tool. It was more icon driven then the GNOME tweak tool that was more menu driven along the left hand side here, which suited it considering how similar it looked to the overall system settings. So it's almost like you had the default system settings that most people would access. And then you had the power users sort of power tools section that could really tweak the Unity desktop into a fine tuned machine. Pro tip for me anyway, one of the first things I do when I uh, install or used to run Unity back in the day and continue to thanks to this release uh, is the click to restore. Uh, when you minimize a window on the default dock behavior, if you click it again, you don't get the window restored, which just doesn't make any sense to me, uh, but you can tick an option in the Unity Tweak tool and have single click to minimize and restore a window to the dock, which uh, I think is really handy. Also other little tweaks that, uh, that I think this desktop did before others was scroll wheel over the volume bar to change the volume, uh, having little applets living up here and some of these applets continue to live on uh, with app icon support. So if you have something that lives in the tray, like an email client or a music player, then you continue to see those little icons up in the top there. And that does bring to mind the fact that the notifications uh, system on Unity was my favorite. This blurred notify OSD uh, setup that Canonical had going here where it would pipe through the notifications for your system to a nice little fadeable list here that would just barely interrupt your workflow. And it looked so pretty that you kind of didn't mind it interrupting you uh, is still my favorite form of notifications of all time. And I don't think any open source desktop has been able to imitate this in the same way. Uh, obviously you lose out on a lot of the interactivity of current GNOME notifications and also, and we'll get to the issues again, but I'll say it here while I'm thinking about it. The notifications that come through on modern GNOME apps, for example, the uh, software center that's based off the GNOME 40 series, uh, when that finishes installing an app, you just get a big ugly dialogue in the middle of your screen instead of a notification. Uh, because at the end of the day, Ubuntu Unity doesn't know what to do with GTK3 or GTK4 notifications for apps. Uh, and again, don't know if this is something that can be patched through in time or whether it is uh, more work than it's worth. But notifications is something that I think uh, Ubuntu Unity's always seem to get right. One last thing that I think Ubuntu Unity got right back in the day was its uh, multi-monitor support in terms of where Windows appeared, where the dock appeared, uh, what you wanted to pop up where. And, uh, and while it wasn't perfect, I think, uh, at least from what I was reading and from my own experience with multi-monitors back in the day, uh, Unity seemed to do a pretty bang up job of recognizing resolutions and understanding scaling at least uh, back when I only had a 2K monitor and not a 4K monitor. Again, can't really comment about modern fractional display scaling. That's something I'll mention in, in a minute, but for its day, the multi-monitor support was pretty good. All right, so what could improve? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, the uh, default keyboard bindings, at least that I remember, 
um, and that uh, most of us got used to during the Unity era, some of these were either not enabled by default or different by default. Um, so for example, uh, some of the workspace switching uh, shortcuts were changed and I needed to kind of change them back. So things like control, alt, up, down, left and right to change workspaces. Um, and also things like the um, being able to tile windows from the keyboard. And this leans into something that was a strength for Unity for the fact that it was initially touted as a desktop that could adapt to both touch-friendly environments as well as having all the mouse ergonomics going on. It was also remarkably keyboard driven as well. And if you held down the Windows key, you would get this beautiful overlay of the desktop shortcuts that were available in Unity for you to use. And most of these still hold up, but some have kind of gone missing or AWOL or they're not quite what they used to be. But one of my favorite choices that they did make was to mirror a couple of the trends from Mac OS in terms of utilizing either the super key or the alt key and then modifiers uh, to achieve different things on the desktop like launching apps, closing windows, or um, jumping around between workspaces. Another thing that I kind of mentioned before is that not all apps respect the global menu and thus are functional with the HUD. For example, while something like the uh, Microsoft Edge browser through a native Debian package works with the uh, HUD quite nicely. The default Firefox browser, which of course is a snap because we are here in Ubuntu land and snap snaps things, uh, we don't have any menu bar support here whatsoever. All the menus are tied into the hamburger menu. Now I can confirm that this is the same behavior if you were to install the native deb package of Firefox, but it is worth mentioning that even electron based apps like Simple Note, for example, uh, installed via FlatHub, uh, they do not respect global menus or are interactable with the HUD either. And so maybe this is something that can be improved down the road. Again, how much of this is going to be significant work that is just not worth it remains to be seen. A few other missed opportunities here would be the use of the dash. The dash used to have expandable lenses that you could use to kind of filter out different search terms. Now, unfortunately, while it still works with uh, recent files and downloads and that kind of thing, it doesn't have the same power as the GNOME activity search does that's built into the default uh, GNOME desktop. And uh, when it comes to like online video or shopping results or anything like that, oh, don't even talk about Amazon search results. A lot of these lenses either don't work anymore or can't be added to down the road. Um, so it'd be great to see and possible for improvement to see the kind of uh, instantaneous search functionality that we're used to seeing on GNOME and even things like um, K Runner, or taking a, a more plugin oriented approach like a keyboard launcher such as uh, U-Launcher, for example, being able to uh, spin up different plugins that you can add to this thing to build functionality onto it. That would be very cool. And we probably would have seen that if Canonical have figured out a monetization model for how to, you know, fund Unity development. Also, it is worth mentioning that while this desktop does look really pretty in its current form, and it looks a lot better than what it did in earlier versions of Unity, so major props to the team for polishing up a bit of the visual uh, glitching that is uh, that, that was left over from you know archaic versions of Compiz and the like. Uh, it is really nice to see the shadows behind the windows, but a lot of the context menus uh, either have very weird pixelated corners or just really flat, like no shaping at all in the actual context menu. So I don't know what's going on there in that the menus that show up or the, the clickable buttons, the GTK widget style in the windows themselves looks quite neat and tidy, but the context menus uh, look a little rough. And also it'd be Fantastic to see the implementation of multi-touch trackpad gestures into a desktop like this, only because a lot of other desktops, Plasma, Gnome, and others seem to be adopting this as kind of standard practice. But what I will give this desktop props for is that for whatever reason, both the uh, cursor acceleration profile and the scrolling, like inertia scrolling, feels so good on this ancient 2011 trackpad that I have on this laptop. Trust me, this trackpad is not good at all, but for some reason, the acceleration curve and the trackpad speed and inertia scrolling on this desktop has always felt really good. And I can't seem to achieve the same level of smoothness on other Linux desktops. It's just one of those weird things. All right, finally, challenges that lie ahead for this desktop. I know I've been talking for a while. If you've come this far, good on you. Uh, some of the main challenges that I can see is the fact that this desktop is 
obviously based on some aging technology. Things like compares running in the background. There are very few desktops now that are using uh, and therefore users that are maintaining compares as a project. Uh, also, the uh, desktop does rely very heavily on the X server display stack. And as far as I know, there's not any plans to port this over to Wayland. Although if there are, feel free to correct me in the comments below. Um, so I guess what I'm saying here is, is that the, 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 the clock is running in terms of Unity as a desktop. And while I love and appreciate and am having a blast using this thing again, and it is in a perfectly functional and usable stable state, at least in my experience over the last two or so weeks using this thing, uh, it is on borrowed time. And there will come a time where the, the amount of things that don't work will outnumber the things that do. So does this mean that we try and achieve a full rewrite of Unity using modern GTK widget sets, using, um, I don't know, up-to-date QML style, you know, um, style Unity shell? I don't know. Unity 8 is still a project that's kicking along and doing all kinds of wonderful things in the phone space, uh, but it never really landed on the desktop in any meaningful form. And at the end of the day, that was the jump that Canonical was wanting to make back in the day, but it just couldn't find the dev time and funding to actually make that jump happen. And hence, Unity died. Well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the Unity desktop. Let me know what you think Unity did right and where you wished it could have improved during its time as the default Ubuntu desktop. We'll see you all in the next one.